the Galaxy S22 Plus has a fresh look, a new processor, and a sharper camera. We took it for a spin to see if it's really worth the upgrade. It's easy to overlook the Galaxy S22 Plus. At $1,000, it's not the cheapest of Samsung's new Galaxy S22 phones. But it also doesn't have the unique characteristics that make the Ultra stand out, like a bigger screen and a four-lens camera. That said, I think the S22 Plus is a nice middle ground for those who want a big screen, but not a giant screen. That's who this phone is really for. People who think the regular S22 might be a little too small, but don't want to spend $1,200 on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Otherwise, there aren't many differences between the regular S22 and the S22 Plus. Both phones have a new 50 megapixel main camera, and they both run on Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. Aside from the size, the S22 Plus does have a few small extras like a bigger battery and faster charging, but it's really that bigger screen that's gonna make the biggest difference for most people. If you're familiar with last year's S21 family, the S22's new look might be the first thing you notice. It has a glass back and metal frame that makes it look a bit more elegant and polished. The S21, on the other hand, has a metal back that looks like brushed aluminum. You might not be able to really tell the difference in photos, but it's really noticeable when you see these phones in person. I personally really like the new design. I think it makes the phone feel fresh, and I'm a big fan of the phone's flat edges. It reminds me a little bit of the iPhone 13 Pro. The new phones come in white, black, green, and pink gold, which is the version I'm using. The Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus have the same design except for their screen size. The S22 Plus has a 6.6 inch screen, while the regular S22 has a 6.1 inch screen. That's a slight decrease compared to last year's phones, which had a 6.7 inch and 6.2 inch screen respectively. I was skeptical of the S22 Plus at first because I felt like the regular 6.1 inch S22 would be big enough for most people. But now that I've spent more time with it, I'm really liking that Samsung decided to offer a middle option. The screen is substantially bigger, but it doesn't feel too big to use with one hand. I could easily see how the Ultra's massive 6.8 inch screen could be too impractical for some people, so I really feel like the S22 Plus is the perfect middle ground. It's slightly smaller than the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the Pixel 6 Pro, 0.1 of an inch to be exact, but it doesn't feel too large at all. Both the S22 and S22 Plus have Samsung's FHD Plus Dynamic AMOLED displays, just like last year's phones. But what I really appreciate is that Samsung once again included the ability to increase the screen's refresh rate up to 120 hertz for smoother scrolling. This makes the operating system feel fast and fluid, but be warned, it can shorten battery life. But the big change that Samsung made to the display this year is a new feature called Vision Booster. Like Apple's True Tone feature for the iPhone, Vision Booster adjusts the screen to match the lighting around you. To be honest, I didn't notice that much of a difference when comparing the S22 Plus alongside last year's S21. But I did notice that it looked a little brighter than the S21, as it should since Samsung says it's put the brightest display ever in a Galaxy phone on the new Plus and Ultra models. The biggest thing that's new to the S22 and S22 Plus in terms of hardware this year is the new 50 megapixel main camera. Last year's Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus only had a 12 megapixel main camera. The ultra wide camera on the new phones is basically the same since it still has a 12 megapixel sensor. But the telephoto camera has changed a little this year. The resolution is lower, but Samsung has improved the optical zoom range. All three new Galaxy phones are also getting better night photography, according to Samsung. So how did this turn out? See for yourself. Take a look at these photos of a flower bouquet. The rose in the front looks more detailed and has more realistic color than in the same photo taken on the Galaxy S21. The S21 did keep more of the flowers in focus, but the color looks overblown. The difference isn't always noticeable, but you can tell if you look closely. Look at these photos of snow-covered branches. They look the same at first, but take a good look and you'll notice the S22 does a better job of retaining detail in the snow, whereas the S21 snow is much softer. As for nighttime photos, there's good news and there's bad news. First, the bad. The S22 Plus had a hard time focusing on still objects in super dark scenarios, 
even though the brightness is pretty good. Now for the good news. It still did a great job of taking photos of actual people in the dark, just like the Galaxy S22 Ultra. As for zoomed in photos, I couldn't tell much of a difference between the S22 Plus and regular S21 so far. We'll be doing more camera testing, so check out our full written review for more updates. The entire Galaxy S22 lineup runs on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. That processor should bring general improvements to performance and things like playing games, but also specific features that rely on machine learning, like camera features. So far, performance has been as snappy as you'd expect from a $1,000 phone. The camera launches quickly, scrolling feels fluid, and games run easily on this phone. The Galaxy S22 Plus also performs slightly better than last year's S21 on benchmarks that are meant to test general performance and graphics performance, but not by much. As for battery life, the Galaxy S22 Plus lasted for 18 hours and 38 minutes during CNET's battery test. That's longer than last year's S21, which lasted for 18 hours and 3 minutes, but not by much. That's not bad, but it would have been nice to see more of an improvement. As for everyday use, the Galaxy S22 Plus dropped down to about 88% after roughly 4 hours of use. It's also important to remember that factors like screen brightness and refresh rate can also impact battery life. My S22 Plus has been set to the adaptive 120Hz refresh rate setting, which probably drains the battery faster. But the Galaxy S22 Plus can also charge faster than the regular S22 since it supports 45 watt charging. The regular S22 only supports 25 watt charging. We'll be updating our written review with more details about the S22 Plus's battery life, so check back soon for more updates. The Galaxy S22 lineup runs on a version of Android 12 that has Samsung's One UI 4 software on top of it. One UI 4 is the newest version of Samsung software that launched late last year. It's not specific to the S22 series, but it is nice that S22 buyers will get this new software right away. Some of the features in the software include easier controls for managing app permissions and more customization options. I've also noticed that some of the camera controls are much easier to navigate compared to Samsung's older phones, which I appreciate. The Galaxy S22 Plus is a modest upgrade to last year's Galaxy S21 Plus. There are a lot of small changes here that come together to make the S22 Plus a little bit better than last year's model. These include a newer processor, a better camera, faster charging, and a fresh look. But if you have an S21 or an S20, you probably don't need to upgrade just yet. But for those with older phones, this will be a nice upgrade. If you're trying to decide between the S22 Plus or the regular S22, screen size should be your biggest consideration. The regular S22 doesn't charge as fast as the Plus model, and it also has a smaller battery. But since we haven't actually tested the regular S22 yet, we can't really tell how much of a difference this actually makes. So what do you think of the Galaxy S22 Plus? Let us know in the comments, and check out the link in the description to see our full written review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.